Hi, in this video we're going to look at if-else statements. Last time we introduced the if statement. If some condition is true, then we execute some code. This is what an if statement looks like. You might say, if the front is clear, then we'll move. Let's introduce if-else statements. We say, if some condition is true, then we execute some code if that condition is true. Otherwise, we have some different code that we might want to run. There are two options here. There's one thing that says we can run this if the condition is true, and one thing that says we run this code otherwise. Let's look at an example. You can say, is the front clear? Then you'll move. Otherwise, else, we will turn left. But why might you want this? If statements and if else statements let Carol handle different types of worlds. We went from giving Carol very specific commands and solving only one problem to now being able to solve more general problems with if statements and if else statements. So let's take a look at some of these examples in the editor. All right, so let's take a look at an if else statement. So remember, our original program, we said, okay, let's move, then move again. And when we ran this, Carol crashes into the wall. So we said, okay, well, let's do an if statement. So we're going to say, if front is clear, then we said we wanted to move. Okay, when we reset our code and run, Carol didn't crash. Um, then we said, okay, well, let's turn left. Well, maybe we don't want to turn left if the front was clear, but we want to turn left if the front is not clear. So this is where we can use our if statement and our else statement. So we're going to now say else, so if the front is not clear, then we are going to turn left. So now we'll notice that this code executes only when our front is not clear. So if we run this, we move, front's not clear. Notice how the editor skips over that move statement and it goes right to this turn left statement. Again, take a look at how it skips over the move and goes to that turn left. Okay, so let's look at another example. All right, so this program, what we're trying to do is put one ball on each spot. So we could solve this problem pretty easily. We can say put ball, move, 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 and then put ball. Okay, so we run this. You see Carol goes and we have a ball there. Great, so we've solved the problem. Well, if we switch to another world and try resetting our code and running that, we're gonna see we have a problem here. It doesn't quite solve our problem now because now we have two balls on the first spot, two balls in the last spot, and nothing in the middle. So this is where we can start to look at putting some different conditions down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a function called um, check ball. So we're going to say define check ball. And we're going to say if no balls present, then we want to put a ball. Okay, so now we can change this here to say check ball. And then we're going to move and we're going to repeat that. So we're going to copy this and repeat that several times. So now we're going to check and we're going to see, okay, if there's a ball there. Oh, we have one last move too far there. Let's get rid of that. Great, so it solves this world. Let's go back. Does it still work on our first world? Yep, so we solved that one, and we have one more world we can try. So now notice that 
we've written our code, we've made it a little bit more generic using this if statement, and that's allowed us to solve the problem for multiple worlds using the same bit of code. So now it's your turn to play around.